Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I've got a question for you. Are you ready to turn your wedding day dreams into reality? Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a family man. I am a husband, a dad, and a dog dad and a wedding photographer based here in Adelaide, South Australia. And today I've got some tips and tricks for you to start your wedding planning process. So the first of these tips is a really, really important one, and that is to set your budget and then give yourselves a little bit of wiggle room. Money can be an awkward thing to talk about, I get it. Uh, but setting a budget early on will help you avoid any surprises down the line. It's important to set realistic goals for your wedding day and to not do anything that's kind of beyond your means. But within that, try and leave yourselves a little bit of wiggle room so that you can maybe stretch your budget just that little bit further for the thing that you really, really want. Wiggle room is also really, really good for any unexpected expenses that might come up that you didn't account for or any last minute additions that you decide on in the later stages of your wedding planning. After all of that, this is a time to celebrate and the last thing that you want are financial worries and troubles in the lead up to your wedding day. With careful thought and consideration, you'll be able to plan an amazing wedding day that won't break the bank. So go ahead, set your budget with confidence and get planning. My next tip for you is to construct a list of wedding priorities for yourself. Every wedding is unique in its own way and that should be reflected by your own individual personalities and showcasing them. That's why I think it's important to create a list of wedding day priorities for yourself. Part of this is including special touches that will make your day truly your own. Don't have to settle for cookie cutter ideas or follow trends. You should be a trend setter. Hashtag break the rules. Let that be a mantra for your whole wedding. Break the rules. Instead, think about what you both value the most when it comes to celebrating your wedding day. Whether it's having an intimate ceremony with close family friends, or booking in non-traditional services like a non-traditional wedding photographer like me, or writing vows personal to yourselves, focus on making decisions that feel right for the two of you. By creating a list of priorities and staying true to yourselves, you'll plan a day that is full of meaning. So the next tip is directly related to the last one. Once you figure out what your wedding day priorities are, don't skimp financially on them. It can be really easy to skimp financially on the wedding priorities that are important to you. After all, budgeting is no easy task. But if there's something that's important to you or your partner and it's one of your wedding priorities, I would encourage you not to cut corners in that area and skimp on it. But if there's something that's particularly important to you or your partner, whether that's a specific venue or a specific photographer, a certain kind of food, my encouragement to you would be to not cut corners financially on that thing. These are the moments that you're going to remember forever. So don't let financial worries get in the way of you getting what you want. Invest time and energy into researching what your suppliers will offer you and make sure that you're spending money wisely where it really matters. That way, when your wedding day comes around, you can feel confident knowing that you spent the money wisely and you didn't sacrifice on your priorities. Tip number four is to get organized and get organized with your partner. The key to planning a wedding is to stay organized and keep on top of your tasks. An easy way to do this is to do it together and share the load. I understand that working together and making decisions together takes time, but I promise you that the process from start to finish will feel much more special, much more meaningful and much more 
easier because there's more of you doing it. Planning your wedding together is a great opportunity for you to practice your negotiation skills too, which is a really important trait for a good, healthy relationship. Even when disagreements arise, keep in mind that you're working together towards the same end goal, and that's to have a wedding day that ultimately reflects who you are as a couple and who you are as individuals as well. Now, that's pretty hard to do when it's only one person doing the planning, so please, I encourage you, do it together and I promise it'll be so much more special. With time, patience and lots of communication, you will have a fantastic planning process together. My next tip for you is to find a wedding venue that allows you to do everything on site and book that bad boy in ASAP as soon as you can. <laughs> Booking a venue early is really, really essential. It ensures that you don't miss out on the style and size of the venue uh, you're after and provides peace of mind knowing that no one else can book that venue on that date. It's yours, you're locked in. Look for venues that offer both indoor and outdoor ceremony spaces. And this is mainly uh, for, for wet weather situations um, or extreme heat situations as well, I guess. And weather is the one thing that you can't change. So it's really, really important to be prepared um, for that kind of thing. And yeah, so finding a venue that offers both is really, really essential. Another thing to think about when picking your venue is the ease of travel for your guests. Um, some people might be coming from far away, but there also might be some guests um, that you invite that would like a, an easier drive home that's not too far away. So take the time to uh, find a venue that suits all of your needs. And once you do, once you've fallen in love with the venue and you fall in love with the people that run that place, um, book it in, get it locked in as soon as you can. Next tip is to work with professionals. Please, please work with professionals. <laughs> Your wedding photos are going to be something that you look back on forever, really, right? Forever. So don't skimp when it comes to finding that perfect photographer. And that goes for your other suppliers too. You wanna look back at these photos fondly, not terribly because of some unprofessional wedding supplier that did you a dirty, that maybe didn't show up or deliver what they said they were going to deliver. Professionals, you shouldn't have that problem. Next tip is to make sure that you are reading all of your contracts uber, uber carefully um, and that's for obvious reasons. Um, there's going to be uh, you know, terms and conditions in there such as like non-refundable booking fees or deposits, um, delivery times on like for photographers delivery times or videographers delivery times. Um, you want to familiarize yourself with all of that stuff so you know exactly what you're getting, exactly what you're getting into as well. Um, so there's no miscommunication. Um, as we all know, miscommunication just leads to problems and misunderstanding. And so a contract really is there to lay it all out for you um, as clearly as possible uh, so that um, yeah, you can avoid any kind of disappointments. And my final tip is a really, really, really important one. And that is to take some time off together. Take some time off together from your wedding planning. Get outside in nature, uh, go away for a weekend together, go have a lovely meal somewhere together and get back to what it was that you were feeling when you first met each other because wedding planning can be stressful. I always tell my couples, if you're planning your wedding and it starts to get stressful, stop planning the wedding and go and reset. And also, if it's stressful, don't plan a wedding, plan a party. Um, and you can go and party before your wedding day somewhere. Just to reset yourselves, get back in the zone, um, reconnect with each other, and uh, yeah, then when you come back to your wedding planning, uh, you feel refreshed and you can think clearly and make decisions together clearly. It's all very, very important stuff. The, the engagement period itself can be quite a quite a period of time <laughs> that goes by quite fast as well. Um, Laura and I, we planned our wedding in under six months and it was a whirlwind. Um, 
most people are having longer engagements than six months, I think. Um, but it still goes very, very, very fast. And taking the time to slow down and savor all of the little moments and experiences that you share together during that engagement period is a really wonderful thing because the engagement period often gets overlooked, I think, because of the stresses that come with wedding planning. So that's all my tips for you today to get you started on your way with your wedding planning. I hope you found them helpful. If you did, drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Like the, the video too, give me a thumbs up um, and subscribe if you want to see more and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when next week's video comes out as well. But for now, thank you so much for spending some time with me here again um, and I'll see you all in the next video.